Uh, I worked there for a couple of years in the mid to late 90s uh, in the bookshop collective and uh, also was part of a group that put on monthly uh, uh, underground rave parties there. And uh, yeah, it didn't stay to the very, very end, but about a year before it closed down, I was, I was still there. I, I, left, I left when it took a direction I wasn't very happy with. Uh, the centre provided um, uh, space for various groups to be based. There was a radical feminist newspaper based there. There was an organisation that helped uh, prisoners. There was, uh, as I said before, there was the uh, radical bookshop, which was open part time. There was also um, there were various other groups that I probably would rather I don't say who they are on camera, but not that they were doing anything nefarious, it's just their business. Um, yeah, um, it, was, it was a local, um, it was a focal point for various communities. It wasn't so much a vo focal point for the uh, native black uh, Brixton community so much, uh, more just um, the kind of younger anarcho sort of teenage and young sort of white politico types Quite regularly, people would sort of turn up at 121 from abroad and say, we've got to involve the local community, you know, why aren't we reaching out? And people would say, well, they've got their own stuff to be getting on with. They don't want a bunch of bloody, um, you know, foreigners who have just come, you know, just just swallowed a political uh, a political doctrine and are really, really evangelistic about, evangelical about it uh, to come and try and tell them how to live their life. That happened quite often. You sort of had to go, you know, had to humour the people when they did that. On a person-to-person -person basis, I would say it changed the society and community. I mean, you know, there's still people involved who were involved still living in Brixton. Um, but, you know, ideas, ideas have been disseminated from that point of the one-two-one.